record on this. Y'all, it has been a big week here at Find Your People. <laughs> Mandy has met the queen of food. <laughs> and I am dying to hear about it. This is Katie. This is Mandy coming to you from a closet. Look, she came on screen today and I howled <laughs> laughing because she was in a closet with like a, it's almost like a, is that a letterman's jacket hanging in the back? The silk? That is that is not my letterman's jacket. Just to be clear, I never had a letterman's jacket. That's the only thing in this closet that's not mine. There are actually three letterman's jacket, all belonging to my sister. Yes. Well, I, I just was confused at first, but I get it now. So tell us where you are, what you're doing, what you're going to be doing, because I have a sneak peek and I'm super pumped about it. Um, I'm sitting in a closet in my sister's house because I'm Which in Nashville. Not, that's not the exciting part, people. Hold on. And I forgot my microphone. And if you have ever listened to Armchair Anonymous on Fridays that the Armchair Experts put out, which if you have not, you should listen. Okay, hold um, on. Armchair Anonymous is part of the one. Armchair Expert umbrella. They are a freaking riot, but they always have people, um, like whenever somebody signs on to talk to them, they're like, oh, I see you're in your closet. So I figured that would help the sound quality since I forgot my microphone. It really does. Like I'm okay, surprised. Good. I mean, not I, don't have a closet. I don't, I don't have a closet at my house. So don't get used to this. No. Um, yeah. I live no. in, I live in a closet. So. You do. Um, but yeah, so I came to Nashville, um, came on Thursday, got a late start because, uh, flashback to the crazy administration at the crazy house, uh, we had the estate sale. All that's done. That's great. We're getting ready to get it listed. I get a call from the estate sale guy on Tuesday that somebody had been in the dumpster and like pulled stuff out of the dumpster. And so their guys had been nice enough to go back over there to put everything back in the dumpster. Sweet people. And they had texted him and said they felt they had noticed a window was open mm. and they felt like somebody was watching them yeah so i called the sheriff and had the sheriff meet me over at the crazy house and we walked through and when we got there the door was open um so yeah so the sheriff walked through by himself and then we left you know there wasn't anybody in there and when we left it it dawned on me that i had not checked the windows so i turned around and go back by myself to check the windows and sure oh. enough Sure enough, there was a window in the bathroom that was just wide ass open and had no screen in it. Did they so, like, was it one of those that's like hop off the ground? Did they have to like do a, I mean, a, a half gainer in the window? It, you know, it was a bathroom window, you know, so yeah. it wasn't large and in charge. Um, and it was, you know, it's probably shoulder height. You know, I mean, for you, but, for me, well, yeah, so it yeah, it was over like, their head, it was wait, over their head, you know, like over my head. head. Yep, yeah, yeah, I would have had to have a stool. So I locked it all up and then I went on to choir practice. This was actually on Wednesday, so I went on to choir practice. And then Thursday morning, I was trying to get out of town and I had to go by there to leave a check for the woman who's going to clean it for us. Which can we all bless that woman, Lord? Prayers and blessings, prayers and blessings. I bless you, Elizabeth um so i went to leave her a check and when i got there the power wasn't on and so i thought well i thought what? i was having the power automatically drafted but maybe i hadn't paid it so i called chelco and they're like well it is a little late it's not automatically drafted but we haven't cut it off did you check the main power breaker and i was like well no and i was taking gracie our gremlin from last week who survived her jump off fall off the bed ass over head her uh to be boarded until her mom got home so i had to take drop gracie off and i went back and sure enough found the main power breaker flipped it so i guess they believed me when i said i had installed a security system mm. and they flipped that main power breaker before they went in through the window gotcha so anyway that was my excitement getting out of town but i got here thursday night and mm -hmm. on friday um early friday morning 
uh, Will, the nephew, headed to a regatta in Chattanooga. And so his mom and I followed um, Friday afternoon, and we stayed in downtown Chattanooga right by the aquarium. Which I and love the Noog. I'm a huge Noog fan. That, that I think, should be a city we should visit together. Yeah, that'd be fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, I've got really good friends from law school, Barrett and Allie, who live there, so I got to see them. Um, and it's the head of the hooch. Y'all, there were boats there from San Diego, California from somewhere in either washington or oregon like and when i tell you like crew culture is such that you have a trailer that has all your boats on it and they're very yeah. particular about their boats but then you also take your trailer with your tents and your grills and your griddles and your food and your i mean it's a setup so i was just shocked that you know there were folks the people from, drove all the way from san diego well my dad said he did see that there were a, there was a spot where you could um rent a boat and so maybe they rented a boat i don't know but it was it was high schoolers it was college kids and it was masters so like you know yeah yeah, yeah. Old, i guess um which it's so funny to watch when you're at those regattas you see those you know these kids carrying those boats and it's like they don't weigh anything right and then you see the people our age carrying those boats and you realize how damn heavy they are oh <laughs> people said heavy. not today right it is it is heavy yeah um so anyway so we did that um all day saturday and then again on sunday will's team did great good um, they finished i can't remember he's told me I want to say they were maybe the top three high school team um what? based on points yeah so that's they did great really job. and that was the end of the fall cruise season so it's getting okay. to be bittersweet i mean bittersweet yeah um because you know senior year well i if you aren't following mandy or the podcast on instagram she posted a, a some pictures for us and i highly encourage you to go look there's one from above did you have a drone or did somebody else Send no, you that there's a, you can stand i didn't take that i took it from somebody else but you can stand on the um bridge the walnut oh, okay. bridge right there um and get great pictures that way it was the those pictures were fantastic and yeah. even the ones of like just will sitting on the side i was like i was getting all up in the feels about his little last senior year so yeah. um i was those they're great pictures so go follow us on the instagram so you can see those people um and then we came back to nashville got back I, <laughs> my mother my mother drove herself to chattanooga oh which yeah exactly i woke up at 5 a.m saturday morning worried about her getting over the mountain of, of um, course as she one does. did she did and you know it was an adventure um and so i drove her home um so we got home pretty early and Julie didn't get home until later. Um, and so I had noticed I had, you know, a fall of cement in kitchen, obviously. Of course. As and we I all had did. seen um, last week that she is currently on a tour of William Sonoma's. Mm -hmm. And she was actually has already been in Atlanta. Sorry, y'all. Um, but I saw she was going to be in um, Nashville on Monday. And she was actually doing, a, it was a cooking class is what it called. Actually, but it was a bunch of people just standing around watching her cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a demonstration more. And uh, then a book signing. And so I texted Julie. I was like, oh my God. So um, by the time I bought tickets, the, the cooking demonstration was already sold out. But we did get the, the tickets to go to the book signing. So Julie gets home from work and I'm all excited. And then, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh -huh. yeah. Just a reminder, I've already told the story on the podcast about the time I saw her in New York yes. eating dinner with her husband. Yep. So I think, was that the last one or the time before? So go back and listen if you haven't heard it. It's a great story. Oh, uh, so I've had the opportunity before to tell her, but you know, I'm always happy to repeat it. Um, and so anyway, we got, we got there early. So then we like had to mill around and then finally mm. they like start the line. We're at the back of the line and Julie uh, is not a she she's a she's a good cook she can cook but she just doesn't enjoy it so she doesn't do it a whole lot yeah um but so she's i'm like okay these are the recipes of hers that we eat all the time like 
or chocolate cake I made for Will's birthday, like every year from the time he was three, you know, cinnamon rolls, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just going through the list of stuff. She's like, what is, is the bread pudding? Is the Thanksgiving bread pudding hers? I'm like, no, that's, that's Bobby Flay's. But, um, you know, so we're, as I'm listing all the things that I make, the woman in front of me turns around, she goes, are you telling her all the recipes you cook? And I was like, yes. And so she's like, so we start chatting. Like yeah. we're both little fan girls. Uh, so that was funny. And so as we got closer, I said to her, I was like, do you, she was by herself. And I was like, do you want me to take some pictures for you while you're standing there? She's like, love yes. it. <laughs> so we, uh, she had three books to sign. So I had plenty of time to take some pictures for her. Love that. Uh, and then Julie's like, I'm going to take your picture too. And I was like, okay. Okay. So yeah, I walk and I, we had already, as we were getting in the line, we were standing there like face to face with her. She's behind her table, but we're like, you know, they're trying to get everybody in where they want them in line. And I'm like looking dead at her. So I was like, where'd you eat in Nashville? Because anytime, <laughs> anytime she does and does a book signing, she'll post like where she eats in that city. Yeah. And so I was like, where'd you eat in Nashville? And she was like, oh, I hadn't had a lot of time yet. I did get a fried chicken biscuit. Um, she's like, but I've got a long list of places I'm supposed to trust. All right, all right. There you go. But see, the video, I just, you know, I talk about how I sounded. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> she was just so, like I said, you know, thank you so much. I can't even tell you your recipes are a part of all our family celebrations. This yeah. is my sister. I said, I made, you know, her sweet son who's now 16, my sister made his sweet son who's now 16. Yeah. I said, I made, you know, her sweet son who's now 16. I said, I made, you know, her son who's now a senior in high school. I put, you know, made his birthday cake from the time he was three. She was like, oh, which one? And I was like, oh, the chocolate cake, the easy chocolate cake. And she's like, oh, yeah. And she said, my son, you know, he really likes chocolate, too. And then I you know, I said something about uh, I had a professional, you know, bakery for a little bit. And your Swiss buttercream saved my ass. <laughs> and she just cracked up. So then she's telling me how she uses the Swiss buttercream and the chocolate now for her Oreo cake. And blah, blah, you know, I mean, just I love it so nice and down to earth and as sweet as she could be so that was my very exciting monday fan girl i mean you get sure. it and then last night uh was there wasn't anything exciting i cooked dinner um but then tonight it's funny so after i had decided to stay and see deb my friend elizabeth texted me and she's like you don't happen to be in nashville next week do you guys like well and she's As like, a I'm matter gonna... of fact, <laughs> and she said, I've got an extra ticket to the Ryman Wednesday night to see Lucas Nelson, Willie Nelson's son, um, whom I love. So that's what we're doing tonight. I and Elizabeth takes it late last night. She said, are the CMAs tomorrow? And I was like, oh, shit. I think they are. They are. So we're going to be in downtown Nashville at the Ryman. With all the crazy people at the CMAs, they're going to be at the Bridgestone, which is like right across the street. So I may be having to bribe the nephew to come pick us up. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like if you, I don't know what y'all are doing, but like if you went early enough for dinner right around there. Well, we're going to City House for dinner at 5 o'clock. Okay, I love that. I love an early dinner before something like that because you don't feel rushed. You can enjoy it um so i applaud your early dinner and night. we're old elizabeth and yes. i went to the maggie rogers concert this summer and we did the same thing like we went to dinner <laughs> sorry i think i'm allergic to my closet do it <laughs> we um went to dinner early and then didn't like have anything to drink at the concert yeah <laughs> we, we discovered that's the way to do it it is it is i so have a nice cocktail like at the adults yes. we are before yes the concert. yes absolutely and then you're sober so what i like to do so here's a pro tip for all my making people if you're going to something at the grand you park right outside the front door of the grand and then walk to either downtown grill yum or the rooker somewhere right around in there ken joe and then you have your cocktails early and then you walk back to the grand go to whatever performance and then when you're done you walk out the front door and into your car and yes. you're right there and you don't have to walk a mile and a half. It's a pro tip. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I'm here for it. I like your theory. 
Well, thanks. So that's been my week. Tell me about yours. What's I cannot your wait to hear next week how that goes. <laughs> um, so I am still loving this new season of Mobituaries. I don't know if you listened to the episode um, that he did called Things That Should Die. Um, also, I just listened today to this week's. It's about, this is a side note, Candace Bergen's father was a ventriloquist yes he was and it's about the the death of his dummy and how it just really ruined her childhood (laughs) i think i read like a vanity fair article or something like that about that like yeah super interesting weird relationship very weird highly recommend definitely go listen to this week's my obituaries if you haven't last week's was about things that should die And the three things that he said should die were buffets, especially (laughs) self-serve buffets. I agree. Standing ovations, (laughs) which I agree with. We jump up and down all the time now. uh, And noise, which you know that we both agree with that one. So it made me think, what about college football do I think should die? (laughs) <laughs> and it's kind of the, along the lines of the standing ovation theory, where I just think that we storm the field and take out the goalpost now way too often. Like that, if at all, should be for like the most underdog of victories or a national championship. Yeah. If that. Yeah, property now, damage should be limited to very yeah, we just. Yes, we storm the field all the time now. All the time. Although um, I will say there yeah. are a few things more entertaining in college football than the videos of the drunk women trying to jump over the hedges in Athens. That and the um, security guards like bobbing and weaving trying to tackle people. <laughs> so that's always fun. Um, I want to say we've already talked about it though. The overall should also be on that list of things that should die in college football. Um, I'm going to also, not that I want this person to die, like physically die, but I think Gary Danielson needs to go away. (laughs) I don't want him to die. I just want him to retire. So those are my things that are inspired by my obituaries that I think should die with college football. Okay. I I believe as I watched um, football on Saturday that the same person who was doing the Fox graphics has now gotten a job with CBS because theirs are equally as mind numbing and look like a child did them with a big paintbrush. And I think that person should also be fired. Um, (laughs) And I don't know how they crossed over to CBS World, but I was like, that's the same graphic that Fox uses. What the heck? <sighs> um, Auburn won. Woo-hoo. I'm here for it. Thank Auburn you, has Arkansas this weekend, which I think is also winnable. Who did they um, beat they were, they, well, they beat, they were with you in Nashville and uh, with Vancouver. Oh, that's right. And the I'm stadium cool. looked like um, Auburn North. So Jordan Hare. Oh, North. listen, it is it is pitiful. Yeah. It's pitiful. Yeah. The only football games I've ever been to, I think, are UT games. Because um, they're the, you know, yeah. Saturday after Thanksgiving. Um, and so I always just thought it was like a Tennessee thing. Mm-mm. Because we're in nashville but there are obviously a lot of ut fans here oh my gosh it's just pitiful well um, the stadium's under construction yes. nashville's a fun town so if you're gonna travel to an away game why not go to nash vegas so i get it but like it was legitimately more orange than black up there it's it's it, it is it is it's what happens yeah and then a lot of times too the because they'll sell all their season tickets like i know this is the case with baseball they'll sell all the season tickets but the people who buy the season tickets don't necessarily want to go to the games yeah they just sell so then there's a bunch of you know very prime empty seats on top of there being a bunch of other it's awful yeah now with um baseball at least they have a program 
that if you're not like especially as it gets in like sec play and, mm -hmm. and regionals and all that if you're not going to use your season ticket you have the ability to turn it back in to the athletic department and they can give them to students there we go that's a good that's a good mm -hmm. option they should have done that saturday well i mean i'm glad they didn't <laughs> I know. It's beautiful bless them i know but i really so we're I don't, I'm going to knock on wood. I'm, I'm not going to say we're on a roll or there's a streak, but I think, you know, that Auburn Alabama game is kind of looming large. It's at Auburn. I, it, I would give my left big it. toe to spoil Alabama season. Like it's, I would like chop it off. So Maybe hopefully be an upset. I hope so um so i this weekend was also i'm gonna talk about some of this in my favorites but um i was in macon uh with my preaching my female preacher group um that um i love these women and um we went to the indian mounds or the uh, i'm park. sorry the uh, mogi national monument yeah, the new national park. I grew up calling it the Indian Mounds. It's really hard for me to call it anything else, but I'm Listen, gonna say Jason Esbell sings a song about Indian. I mean, not a song about Indian Mounds, but he mentions having a cup of coffee by the Indian Mounds. I mean, they're they're Indian well, Mounds. It's they're okay. beautiful, uh, and it's a beautiful park. They've done a great job. They've really expanded it since I was little. Um, there's a great story about me when I was about four years old. Uh, my cousin Molly used to take me out there all the time. And you know, the Earth Lodge, have you ever been there? I have not. Okay. I highly recommend next time you're in Megan, if you have time. The Earth Lodge is where they used to have meetings or ceremonies. and But you have to duck. As an adult, you have to duck to walk in. And so it's very low. You have to bow. It's almost like taking that posture of worship or uh and then you come into this big room and there's an eagle and clay on the floor and you sat around the sides well i mean we wouldn't have because we're girls but the men would sit around the edges um and there's a fire pit in the middle anyway it's just a very sacred space and now as an adult i have to bend like in half to walk in but when i was little i didn't have to do that and so i was walking in and i turned around to molly and i said does jesus live here <laughs> like i could just tell it was sacred whatever right. it was. so i got a picture of my friend sarah's little girl who's about four what well, oh, she is four walking in um and you know it just made me think that that's kind of what molly saw that day when when I um, proclaimed that that's where Jesus that's lived, <laughs> but it's so pretty. There are so many mounds, like even that have not been fully restored that are everywhere up and down the river. I mean, it's crazy how big this civilization was thousands and thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but they've got one that's the temple mound. It's really tall and it's got these great views um, and it, Every time I'm up there, it reminds me of the sound of music because, you know, I'm a musical girl. And so every time I go up there, I have to twirl. It is like a rule. I mean, it's a thing sure. you have to sure. spin. Yeah. And so I got up there and I did my twirl and I sang The Hills Are Alive. And it was, Listen, it was that's great. That's better than me. The only Indian mounds I've been to are the ones along the Natchez Trace when Will and I have driven yeah. Trace Parkway. Yeah. And those are all, I can't remember which tribe, but it's one of the tribes in the uh, Tim McGraw song. Oh, yeah. Cherokee <laughs> so and Choctaw. That's what I start singing when I'm yep. on the Indian mounds. Well, these I mean, are Mrs. Mrs. <laughs> these, I know, right? There are several groups. I'll tag the website and the thing. I, if you're yeah, anywhere I mean, you're making. Like, it's I been, would, um, it was, you know, it. the New York Times does the 52 places to visit every yeah. year. Yeah. The Oak Mulgee National Park made I'm the 52 places to visit this year. Like it's they supposed to be really incredible. Done a beautiful job. And these new trails go through the swamp side so sometimes they're closed because if you get any rain it's underwater but like the wildlife and the natural 
you know, flora and fauna. It, it's just beautiful. And once you get up to that Temple Mound too, like you see Macon, like you cannot see it anywhere else. Mm-hmm. That's it's awesome. It's just gorgeous. So and that's, it was a real, it was a struggle or it, it was, I don't know if it was a, I don't know if struggle is the right word, but it was for those of you who aren't aware, um, there was a movement to build a road from savannah to augusta yeah augusta to columbus augusta to columbus and the fall on freeway right through the mounds Mm -hmm. and so there had to that's sort of when the mound sort of got a national spotlight again Mm -hmm. is because of that fight to keep that road from cutting right through them so so back in the day and this is when a lot of the things were discovered down there and it, it still runs through there today, right through the middle of it is this, um, scar where, um, and not to invoke the power of Norfolk Southern, but the rail yard goes right through the middle of it. Um, now it's deep down enough where like, if you're standing on one side, you can look across and have an unimpeded view. It's not like you see a train, when it comes to the middle of the park and there's a beautiful bridge they built over it. So it's not horrible, but like that's where a lot of the damage to the mounds, they cut through actual mounds to dig um, the train trestle. So they won't ever, I don't think do that again, but um, it's just fantastic. And I I just, again, I cannot highly recommend it enough. It is a beautiful, beautiful place. So go there um, and twirl. When you get to the top, you have to twirl. (laughs) and sing the hills are alive for sure yep um and then i wanted to follow up so the last thing i've done look that buttermilk was in that refrigerator calling my name it was saying every time i opened the door i'm still here use me i'm still here don't let me go bad not that buttermilk (laughs) is not spoiled milk anyway but whatever um so i put some in some mashed potatoes this week that's something we didn't mention last week. So good and mashed potatoes. And then I made that peppery cheese bread and it is making my life a, a brighter place. Yum. It looks good. Use unexpected cheddar, which mm-hmm. is my, I've used the old crock from Publix. If you don't have a Trader Joe's, the old crock is really, really good. You can get it in the specialty cheese section. Just one little block of it. It's so good. Of course, I put extra cheddar on top because, you know more cheese more cheese better cheese so yeah so i've done that and i have enough left and i did get a a two pack of crusts i know i could make my own but i have enough left to make a pie so that might be happening good i mean it's not on my new lifestyle diet but well you know so yes speaking of yes 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 to, uh, uh, it's your day for food and your this list the last thing on this list makes me so happy that we're friends it is why we're friends <laughs> this is one of the many reasons why we're friends so talk to us mandy this week about thanksgiving side dishes but yeah that's we we're um if y'all are anything like you know the caldwell family you have the ones that you have to have yep um and ours really at this point the only one we absolutely have to have every year is nanny's dressing Mm. um and you know for those of you who may not be from the south which is i don't think anybody who listens to us but who knows (laughs) um in the south we call it dressing it Mm -hmm. uh most typically is made with cornbread yeah y'all i'm gonna tell you right now don't be going and mixing up any jiffy cornbread no. and putting that in your dressing that's that's not gonna do you you need to go by the you know martha white or mm-hmm. lily or whoever like one of those girls that need sugar in it for this you get the cornmeal nanny preferred the white self-rising cornmeal mm-hmm. but like just any of that cornmeal is fine follow the directions on the package use buttermilk if you got it yeah um and make that cornbread that's what you start with the closest um the nanny's dressing recipe is very much a one of those you go by feel recipes in my family at this point um the closest one i have found to it is paula dean's 
cornbread dressing recipe. Okay. Um, Nanny added a can of cream of chicken soup. Love her. So if you go Paula Dean's recipe and add a can of cream of chicken soup, then that's like as close as you're going to get to Nanny's recipe. Plus probably at least double the amount of sage that it calls for. Like we like some sage. Um, and it is a production on Thanksgiving morning. You can go ahead and make your cornbread right now if y'all want to. And That's what I was going to say, Mandy. Is this one of those things that you can make ahead? Next week, we'll, I hope you'll go through your whole schedule. But like, this is one of those things that we've talked about. Make your day a little easier. Go ahead and make your cornbread. Absolutely. And put Love it in that. the freezer right now and you'll be good to go. Um but yeah, so we, Will is in charge of crumbling the cornbread. Love it. Unfortunately, the big bowl that we always used uh, broke a couple of years ago. Ooh. So we always have to kind of improvise now on that. Yeah. But Will has to crumble the cornbread and get it just the right texture. Okay. Um, and then, um, meanwhile, I'm cooking. And sometimes I'll get all, like all of this done the night before. Mm. Saute in your yeah. onion, your celery and all that. But then, like, once we start mixing it all up, everybody has to come taste it and be sure that it's right. And then, once it's ready, um, you have to wait until you pull the turkey out. This is the other thing I would tell y'all is to go right now. I saw him in Williams Sonoma the other day and buy a gravy separator. Oh, yeah, yeah. That sucker is worth its weight in gold. Yep. So, you pull the turkey out, you take it out, you pull it and put it somewhere to rest. And then you take everything that's in the bottom of that yep. roasting pan and you pour it, it looks like something from your chemistry class. Um, and it's magical because if you let, you know, you pour everything into this like beaker thing yep. and it sits there and then, and then it's got a spout on it, but the spout is placed so that once you start pouring stuff out, the fat is right. separated from the good stuff. And let me tell y'all that good stuff is gold. So once you've got your turkey done and you pour all that in your turkey in your gravy separator thing, and then you pour a little bit of that turkey gold on top of mm. your dressing before you cook it. Done. That's where, that's where it's at y'all. That's where the magic is. I mean, I love that you think that it's magic. It is it, magic. It is magic. I love it. It is magic. Magic. Um, but so that's really the only one for us that we have to have every year. We started a few years ago. There are just so many um, interesting and delicious looking stuffing recipes or we or alternative dressing is what we call it. So we usually have Nanny's dressing and then I'll also make some sort of alternative dressing. So oh. sometimes it'll be like a stuffing with like made with challah bread or sourdough or something like that um sometimes we've also done like oysters oyster dressing we've done that i'm a big fan of oyster dressing gogi used that. to do that at christmas not mm -hmm. at thanksgiving but at christmas it's delicious if you love an oyster it's so good gosh yeah. it's good the it ended up that flavor profile ended up being so much like the traditional dressing that we mm. sort of switched but so I don't even know what my alternative dressing will be. Some years I don't even make an alternative dressing because um, it's usually just nowadays it is usually just uh, my mom, Julie, Will, Lewis, and me for Thanksgiving. So it's pretty small. Mm -hmm. So I try not to like go completely overboard. Um, and then we have something green. And I will say probably for 10 years now, our something green have been Brussels sprouts. Um, I love it. with pancetta is what we do and that's a good it's a i'll i'll link it katie it um it's actually a giada de Laurentiis recipe and it's good because you can do it on the stove because as we'll talk about next week you start running into the problem of what's in the oven and if everything needs to be in the oven your oven's full and then yeah. crap what do you do so i like that that brussels sprout recipe because you can do it um on the stove and will has always like from the time he was three loved that recipe and it's got that pancetta on the top so basically you know it's a lot of bacon so who mm. i mean right um so that's typically our something green and then we'll usually do something else they love sweet potato balls yes i do not 
Oh, that's another Paula Dean recipe. Um, mm. you basically have the mash... SNS ones. Did you have the SNS ones? See, I don't like sweet potatoes, so I'm not ever gonna really. Uh, well, they're like dessert, but that's exactly what. So these yeah. are like mashed sweet potatoes that you get a gigantic um marshmallow. marshmallow. You roll sweet potatoes around the marshmallow, and then you roll it in a mixture of coconut, cinnamon, and sugar. Mm. Good, they, but they are like dessert, and I'm just yeah. like it's too much work for me. So I make if I'm like if y'all want sweet potato balls, y'all have to make them yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so the SNS does it with I think Ritz crackers or some kind of cracker. It's not the coconut. Gotcha. So yeah. it's got a little crunch on it. Or the S and the S, as Gogi liked to call it. Gotta love some S and S. Am I right? Um, I think, sure I, did. I think it was a what's gobby cooking uh, recipe. It was like a some kind of squash that uh, I sliced and roasted, and then you served it. I think with ricotta yeah. and uh, pomegranate seeds on top. Um, and it was pretty good. I don't know that I'll do it again. I don't think I loved it that much. Um, yeah. But that's sort of our other, our something else. So something green, something else. Mm -hmm. And then I will say the other thing we have to have is the congealed salad. Um, and it's the strawberry pretzel salad. Oh, yes. Is also a dessert. Yes. Um, it's got the pretzel crust and then like cream cheese cool whip mm -hmm. layer and then strawberry jello on top. So. No. So we always had, um, we were big casserole people. So we always had a broccoli casserole, squash casserole, which I love those two things very much. We did that. Nanny used to do that a lot. And always. then our, our congealed salad was a mandarin orange congealed salad that has cottage cheese in it. Look out. Now that is legit. That's a so legit congealed salad. One thing that I, I know, right. One thing that I inherited from Gogi is her old recipe box mm -hmm. and I would say 75% of the recipes have jello in them, <laughs> savory and sweet. Yeah. And then there's um, alcohol drinks and, <laughs> and non alcohol drinks and desserts. And that's pretty much it. There you go. Well, <laughs> my mother gave all of Nanny's recipes to her first cousin. What? Yeah. Um, but. Nanny's recipes were funny anyway. Most of the ones that we love, I know by heart anyway. Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't make most of these. Right. I mean, there's a lot I, of tuna in them. That generation. I had tuna. an epiphany. Have I talked about this already? I had an epiphany uh -huh. watching Mad Men when they were trying to get the Cool Whip account on Mad Men. Uh -huh. It dawned on me that that generation were like young women when all of the like box cake mix cool whip when all that stuff first came out and so that was the new cool thing yeah. when they were young cooks and so oh. a lot of what nanny made was you know dump and stir and cool. new like, that woman loves yeah. some cool whip look yep. out we didn't have Dang. homemade like whipped cream forget it yeah. it was cool whip or die cool um and she saved every cool whip container she ever had yep trust me mm -hmm. um so anyway, but, uh, and, you know, because we're so small, we don't do like appetizers and like, yeah. but my one rule is like, I see a lot of um, people recommending your Thanksgiving salad. This is my favorite thing of your whole side. Thanksgiving is not the time for salads. No, no salads. I don't no. want rabbit food in my Thanksgiving but, menu. There, you Listen, you'd eat this meal once a year maybe twice if you have you know leftovers okay do not waste your stomach space mm -mm. on foliage mm -mm. there need not be any foliage taking up room in your stomach it is not the day for it keep that you're my day after. favorite human <laughs> it's not <laughs> happening no rabbit food don't do it if you have got vegetarians coming to your table, there are plenty of other ways to feed them. They will be yes. excited to eat something other than a salad. Because do you know how often in their life all they get offered is a salad? Yeah. No. No, no. salads on the Thanksgiving table. Thank you. Goodbye. I love it. That's my favorite part of this whole list is no <laughs> salads. No salads. No salads. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, well, thank right. you for that. So next Absolutely. week, I think we're going to round out our Thanksgiving um, with uh, a full uh, Mandy. I hope we'll, uh, you know, go over her schedule and, you know, all those things. I saw Cement and Kitchen posted hers on my Substack thread where I follow her religiously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got some good family recipes that I was never trusted to make, but I can make. And so I will bring those as well. I have a good sweet potato. My mama can make a sweet potato casserole like no other. And so I will give you her tips and tricks on that. Um, so we'll do a full Thanksgiving rundown next week, but this gives us plenty of things to think about and get a head start on. So thank you, Mandy. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to hear about your favorites. Oh my gosh. Okay. So are you watching Gilded Age? I have not watched the latest season, but I did see it is back. So, there are two episodes. They're both very good. You know, sometimes the acting is, you know, a little overly dramatic, but they were back then. What I love about Gilded Age is that not only is it set in New York back in the day, it is um, acted by a laundry list of these brilliant New York stage actors. Yeah. And if you go watch it and you don't recognize someone, that's because they're a Broadway star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is not a person on there that, I mean, Audra McDonald has, I mean... 10,000 Tonys for all her work. Um, uh, you know, Christine Baranski. Like, it's just every character, every new character that comes on the screen, I'm like, oh my gosh, I know her. I know him. So it's very well done. The sets are gorgeous. The costumes are brocade and beautiful and silk and lovely and wonderful and so um i highly recommend if you like those kind of shows but it's back and yeah, i'm super excited it sort of reminds me a little bit of like the throwback you know knots landing dynasty sort of yes. that kind of feel to it which is fun because that's what we grew up on this season has an older woman who's a widow seducing a younger boy it is Trouble in River city the best so um that was really good yeah. the other thing i watched um i didn't read the book and i wish i had now all the light we cannot see is a limited series on netflix and look mark ruffalo is one of my favorite people i love him he's so cute he's not great at accents <laughs> sorry mark you're precious though and it other than that being a slight bit distracting it is a beautifully shot and well done um take on that book i oh, loved it and i got through it pretty quick um, um i love the book so have, I, have i ever told you my my problem with books no i read a book and then, and then it falls right out of my head yeah i can't remember any details about yeah. any books ever yeah very rarely so uh oh, like Mandy's. Mandy, I feel like maybe it's something about World War Two. It is uh, about World War Two. You were glitching a little. I'm so sorry. it's about World War Two. It's about this blonde girl. Okay. Who yes. broadcasts um secret subver subversive messages to the good people, and the Germans trying to find her to stop her. Okay. And, you know, her dad, her mom either died giving birth to her or something. Her mom's not in the story, but um, the guy that plays House, Hugh Laurie, is in it. I didn't even recognize him because he's got okay. a big beard. It is really good. So I highly recommend that you watch that. You can't wait to have a big pile up and watch that. It's so good. It's so good. You'll like it. Uh, the other thing that I'm loving, and you suggested this, and this week's episode was a rerun, but it was really good. So Gravy Podcast mm -hmm. is about all things Southern and all things food. It's done by the Southern Foodway Alliance. But the one this week that I, if you aren't listening, first of all, go subscribe to it. But listen to this week's because it is um, the perspective of some Native Americans 
on Thanksgiving. And it's about a group that's still living in North Carolina and how our Southern food is really based on Native American food. Like we like to say that we did it, but we didn't do it. <laughs> um, and just their perspective on what Thanksgiving is and how it's more of a harvest festival. It is an excellent, excellent take on okay. Thanksgiving and a good reminder of, you know, a lot of things. So <laughs> go listen to that. The other thing that has come out of that that they suggested was a podcast called The Southern Fork. And it is seasonal. It's not every single week. So she doesn't have a current season out right now. But there's an old episode about the H&H. Oh, well, then you know it's legit. Yes. And it was so good. So I recommend going to listen to that and getting hooked on her little podcast, too. She's from the low country, but lives in Atlanta. So I highly recommend she does really good stories. I've listened to a couple of her episodes just to see if I liked it. And the one, of course, from H and H stood out. So um go listen to the Southern Fork. I don't um, know. wait for that. I don't know, right? Uh so while I was in Macon, I, there are several new shops. I love a local store. We're going to do a whole episode, I hope, on um, shopping for Christmas and shopping local and, you know, some of our favorite local places. But I thought I would go ahead and and list out these new places uh, because I just love them. And I, you know, I help contribute to the economy this week. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice of you. But I did get some good things. I started my Christmas shopping a little bit, so that was good. But um, the, the first two i'll do are actually right by h and h which is ironic so on that same strip of cotton avenue which has its own really fascinating history but on that same strip where h and h is there's a new locally owned independent bookstore called bear books be the bear be the bear b-e-a-r not b-a-r-e someone asked me that and i was like nope mercer's in macon don't forget it's <laughs> b-e-a-r how could we and they, right, um, so they just have the, they're small, but they've got, it. it's not, somebody, a friend of mine said this to me the other day, because we both want a drawing, I put my name in a hat and one, which I never do, it was a, it's a candle maybe, anyway, he and I both decided that we like those little stores like that, because they curate good books. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. not like barnes and noble where they have one of everything and it's right. overwhelming and you gotta wade through a bunch of junk the book selection that she has is great the book selection for children's books is really good if you need a gift there's a section of course in the back of like biographies and cookbooks and all those kind of things too but the classics and the new books that she has out just really are a very well curated set of books. So I highly recommend that store. Um, that. I bought um, Lessons in Chemistry, which I'm planning on reading um, either Thanksgiving or Christmas because Good. you told me I should wa read it before I watched it. So we I all like knew I, sections. <laughs> I did everything Mandy tells me to do. So I, I bought that book from Bear Books. So like three doors down from there is a new antique store that's also very well curated. So it's kind of in between Scott's level of high-end antiques and the flea market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it's good stuff. Um, and it's called, I think it's called MD Exchange, but it's like two doors down from Bear Books. So if you go to Bear Books, just head north a, a couple of shops okay what i got in there you're gonna love it, it uh it's amazing so they had this whole rack of old the big size magazine advertisements mm -hmm. and i got one for um i think it's canada dry ginger ale that says something like every drink needs a good bubble so that's going by the bar wasn't clearly Canadian. And maybe it was. No, it was. <laughs> you got me there. The other one was, well, I got three. The second one for the dining room I got was one 
of a bourbon advertisement that I'd never heard of this kind of bourbon, but it said it's got this long dialogue of ways to choose a good bourbon. And so that was really cool with some graphics on it. The third one I've got, you're going to laugh. It's actually for the bathroom. And it's an old Tampax print advertisement. That. And it's, it's got these beautiful women in these gorgeous ball gowns. I don't know where they are. But just at the very bottom in the same blue that these ladies are wearing, it just says Tampax. <laughs> I just couldn't resist. So it's going to get uh, home. So wait, the advertisement for Tampax. Yep. All it has is in the lady's dress. No, no, at the bottom. Like, but it's yeah, like. The same color. Like, you wouldn't even notice it if you didn't know. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Says a lot about a lot of things. Right. Right. Don Draper would be very proud. <laughs> oh, my Lord. So, those are the two new ones. Fine. So, the other places that I went. Um, one is now Petals, but it was 7th Street Salvages, like storefront, not their salvage business, but their storefront. And it's literally like exactly the same, except there are a few more plants. So they have great stuff. They have great Christmas ornaments. They have great gifts, you know, super cute stuff. Okay. So um, if you were sad that 7th Street was closing, don't be, just go to Petals. Um and then I went to see my sweet friend, Scott, at Bohemian Den, and I got some things for the girls for Christmas. These, um, they're felt like little zip purses, but they've got rosettes on them. They're just really handcrafted, yeah. real cute things. I'll stuff it with, I don't know, pencils and pens and stuff for them for Christmas. And then Scott has opened a bakery and it's oh. Sweet Eleanor's. And it's named after his grandmother. And um, there was a lot of bakery controversy over the last six months in Macon. Uh oh. Yeah. So I'm he took over decadent. If you know anything about the Macon bakery controversies, he took over the decadent space. Let's just say that the owner was being inappropriate with his employees, uh, the married owner. Uh shocker right so um he has taken over that space it's a beautiful he's a wonderful human being scott is one of the nicest kindest just the best human i just love him so go go once you're use up all your energy shopping and making go to sweet eleanor's and get a cookie and um say hey to scott so well, I went, um, I'm, I'm headed to make him on friday but i don't foresee myself having any time to shop because it's homecoming uh, and my 20th law school reunion if but you could if I, I, get I would minute, say for you if you could do the bear books and the md exchange they're right there together if you have 30 minutes okay they're worth the stop in if not i mean next time you're in town definitely but those two i was just so excited to see such a great little um area some of the buildings on cotton avenue were co literally collapsing yeah. And they have brought them back to life and they have done great, great things with them. So I was so that, excited to see it. Is that part of um, Newtown, Newtown Macon? Did they have Newtown and Historic Macon, I think maybe partnered or it's just okay. historic. I don't know. But that That's is cool. the stretch up closer to the hospital. Yeah. By H&H. Awesome. So yeah, it's great. Absolutely. Yeah, for those of you who may not know, H&H. &H, oh yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> since we talked Macon lingo without explanation right h and h is um cafeteria downtown and it's where the almond brothers used to like eat every meal mm -hmm. and she would feed them before they were famous she would feed them for free and then they took her on the road they took mama louise on the road to cook for them once they did get famous so if you're an almond brothers lover at all you probably have heard of mama louise um, and their lore. Um, so yeah, H&H &H is great. But the Moonhanger group that owns a lot of my favorite restaurants in town have bought the H&H &H and have done a great job with it. So good. I highly recommend you go in there. Good. Good. Yay. Yeah. Yay, friend. What's up for you this weekend? 
So this weekend, um, I'm going to be watching football. Shocker. I'm going to make some more grits because I haven't done it in like two weeks. <laughs> so I'm going to make some more grits with my tomatoes, my slow roasted tomatoes. Um, you know, every Sunday it rolls around. I got to preach. So I'm doing that. Um, and I do want, so I'm going to do a Advent series on my other podcast and it'll be just a short little devotional every day. So I'll tell y'all more about that coming up, but I'm going to be working on that. You're going to post, are you going to record yeah. every day? Yeah. Real short, nothing like long and involved, but it's all around the hymns of the season. So Ooh, I guess I forgot you told me that I'm excited. About yeah. That. I'm excited about it. Um, so that'll be nice. Uh, my people in my church don't get out much. So this is a way for me to help them have something every day during Advent to do. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then um, we're getting really close to Thanksgiving. So next week, um, what about you? What are you doing? Are you preparing while you're there already? I was thinking I, was thinking I should make some cornbread. Um, yeah. That would take entirely too much forward planning. Right. I, I am a person incapable of forward planning. <laughs> like I know in my mind it's coming yeah. up, but I don't, I don't make the connection to how far away it is from right now. Gotcha. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a big challenge for me. Um, so no, I mean, I, I should, but I probably won't. Um, no, so I'm going to Macon. Um, That'll be fun to hear about. I can't wait to yeah. hear. I'm excited about it. All that good. Do y'all have plans somewhere? Like, are you going to a certain restaurant or something? Where um, there's a reception. The dean is having a reception Friday night, and then after that, oh, we, are we fancy. Our, like, oh, you listen. It's for all the classes, not just us. Yeah. Um, but then after that, we are going to Piedmont Brewery. Oh yeah. So my friend Richie Jones that I went to high school with. This is how making works, people. My friend Richie Jones that I went to high school with owns Piedmont. So if he's there, you tell him I said hello. He's a great uh -huh. guy. Really great guy and does good work. He owns Downtown Grill as well. So oh I, oh, and I will tell you what I'm sad to be missing. Um, um my friend Shauna who works at Mercer. Yes. Um, told me they do, and I can't remember what it's called. Um, they do a dinner, and it's part of homecoming every year, I think. But they, it's through because you know Mercer is now doing a Southern Studies similar to what Ole Miss has. Really? Yes. And so it's part, it's through that program. And I think they do it every year um, on during homecoming. What is it called? The, uh, let's see, Southern Spirits Dinner. Love that. And when she texted me last week, it, it was not sold out yet. So if you're in Macon, I think that would be such a fun thing to do Friday night. I cannot do it do. because I have these other obligations. Yeah. Three course meal paired with cocktails and the Southern Studies faculty talk about a writer with each course. Stop it. How fun does that sound? I wish I was. So I love where I am. I really do. I love being close to Atlanta. And there's great stuff to do, but I'm, I'm like, I, I'm not driving all the way into Atlanta for something like that, but if I'm in right. Macon, I'm there. So I, I, I want to say that you have held it in the past at the Woodruff house. Maybe love that. And it's, it's $75. They've done a lot of great work on the Woodruff house. That's really pretty too. So um, uh, they're on Coleman Hill. It's got the best view. Right. Love so it. I wish I could go to that, but I can't. Um, and then Saturday we've got a tailgate. Um, and then the game's at like three. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So it'll be fun. That will be fun. Yay. Go Bears. We'll have lots to talk about next week. I'm very excited. Me too. Me too. I hope you have a good weekend. I will. Uh, War Eagle. That's the main thing. Go Bears. Them, them too. <laughs> All right, friends. Well, come back and join us next week and hear about all our crazy shenanigans For that sure. we get into. Yeah. And I can't wait to hear about your concert um, that you're going to. So um, there'll be lots to talk about. Um, we'll have to squeeze it in, though, because we're going to do all Thanksgiving all the time to help you get prepared. So mainly it's going to be Mandy, but I'll, I'll contribute. I can cook, too. I was just never allowed. <laughs> Oh, thanks y'all all right friends y'all have a have a great week talk to y'all later
And you know what we didn't do? Brooke! Brooker! We love you. We love you, you Brooke.